Hey, fifth grade, it's Mrs. Pritchard again. Um, I'm kind of moving you in to customary units of liquid volume. So that's kind of going to be our main focus for math this week. And so last week we were working on customary units of length. So this week it's going to look a little bit different. Okay, so it's kind of unlike the metric where we could kind of keep that same visual. So does anyone have any idea what our customary units of liquid volume, like what we measure liquids in? Yeah, like I always think of um, milk. I love milk. And a lot of times it comes in like gallons. Sometimes it might come in pints, good quarts. And then sometimes like the smallest unit we're going to talk about is cups. Awesome. Okay, so um, today I'm going to be sharing with you a visual that we're going to be using. And so this will be in your Monday folder. But it kind of has two things here. So if you look, we kind of have a chart that goes through, oh, sorry, that kind of goes through um, that one gallon is equal to four quarts, which is equal to eight pints, and then is equal to 16 cups. So as you can see, we're kind of going from the largest and then we are going down to our smallest unit being cups. So again, there's kind of four main units that we're gonna focus on. And then in the table, I kind of put other ones, like what if you had a fourth of a gallon? What would that be in quarts, pints, and cups? And then even if you had an eighth of a gallon. So this is going to be kind of really important when we're doing our conversions. But I also put gallon mon. I know some of you are kind of used to them. So this is another good visual. So if I look and I have my gallon, I can see how many quarts are in that gallon. So that's what those cues are, right? So I can count one, two, three, four, just a good visual. And if I looked at that, how many pints are in a gallon? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then in every single one of those pints, it's really tiny to see. There are two little C's for cups. So if I counted those, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 cups. So this visual kind of matches the chart up there. But it's also kind of fun because I could say, hmm, just by looking at this chart, how many pints are in one quart? How many pints are in one quart? So you could say, okay, well, if I look at one quart, one of my cues, how many pints are there? Two. So it's actually a really good visual sometimes that you can just look at and do conversions. We're going to be using these two to help us when we do our coding today. Okay, so again, this will be in your Monday folder to help you with your sample problems. So today, you guys are going to figure out like, wow, we're always doing the same steps. Just the number is going to change a little bit, kind of that magic number. So, again, so I have to stand. What way do I like? Mm, whoop, making sure you're paying attention. Okay, so if I start with 12 quarts, and I want to know how many cups. So remember, when we're thinking of kind of largest to smallest, we have our gallon. Think of like gallon of milk. Okay, then we would have our quarts, which is our cues. Then our pints, which is PT. And the smallest one, remember, are our cups. Okay, so if I'm just coding and we just went over these, so if I'm going quarts to cups, and again, you can look at this visual. I'm going to put this down for one second. I think Gallon Man is a beautiful visual, you guys, even to see. So if I'm looking at this and I was going quarts to cups, look at how tiny cups are. Right, they're a lot smaller. I could also look up here. Here's my largest, and then cups down here is my smallest. So it's still similar to kind of the staircase. So I know I'm going from a larger to a smaller unit. Okay, this is no different, and we know we're going to a smaller unit. Okay, it's going to take more of them. So think about going down the staircase if that helps you, right? And down always means to multiply. And we're going from a larger to a smaller. Now, here's the tricky part because we're not in metric. We're still going to write an expression, right? So I'm going to take that 12, which is what I started with. I know I'm going to be multiplying. Now, this is where the chart is really important. 
So I need to find kind of my magic number, which is I first need to know, well, how many cups are in just one quart? I'm not gonna worry about this 12 right now. I'm gonna say, how many cups are in one quart? So you can do kind of two things. It depends what kind of visual you like to look at. So I could always kind of look up at the table here. Okay, so I wanna know how many cups, how many cups are in one quart? Well, this is pretty nice because if I look at this table up here, I can see one quart. If I go down, boom, there's my magic number. Four cups are in one quart. That's pretty nice. Or if I was looking at my gallon man here, and I look at one of my quarts, and I understand there's two pints, but remember in each pint are two cups, so two, four. So either way, whether I look at this or I just come up to my chart and say one quart and go across is equal to four cups, I get my magic number, okay? And this is what is gonna be different each time, so you gotta use that table. So when I come back here, I found out that there's four cups in one quart, so I'm just gonna do 12 times four. Okay, and on this one, remember, we're not worrying about shifting, we're just doing the math. Sometimes it might be easy, sometimes it might be a little bit harder. So if I multiply 12 times four, which I'm hoping should be an easy fact, what would we get? Fifth grade? Yeah, 48 cups. When I write my answer up there, it would be 48 cups, which makes sense because cups are small. Think of me drinking my cup of coffee. Okay, they're small, so it's gonna take more of them. Okay, so look at this again. Step one, coding, looking at your chart. Step two, writing an expression, but this being the big idea this week is finding that magic number. What are you gonna multiply or divide it by? We have to use our chart or our gallon man. And then the third step literally is just solving it doing the math okay okay let's try another one let's do okay so we're going to do 104 pints and i want to know how many gallons that would be so remember, the first thing we're going to do is just code. So if I don't know, I'm going to go to my chart. And I'm going to say, okay, if I'm going pints, I'm going pints to gallons. Again, I might look at this. This is an easy visual. So pints, I can see are those peas. Look at how small they are. And obviously, I can see that this entire thing is my gallon. And if I'm looking up here, again, gallon is my largest. Pints is way down here. If I'm going pints to gallons, I'm going from that smaller unit, because pints are smaller, I'm going to that larger unit, gallons. So if I'm going to a larger unit and I know it's not gonna take as many of them, what operation would I be doing? Yeah, I'd be dividing. So you already have step one done. Okay, step two is I'm writing that expression. So I'm gonna do 104 divided by, and then this is where we have to use our chart and get that magic number. So I need to figure out how many pints are in one gallon. Okay, so I need to know how many pints are in one gallon. So I'm gonna hold this up kind of. So again, you can go to your chart. So I would probably go to the top one because it says one gallon and just go across Oh, eight pints. So it takes eight pints to get one gallon, right? And if I look at my visual here, if I'm looking at the entire gallon, woo, gallon man, I can see there's two, four, six, eight peas or eight pints. Okay, so if you like the visual better, that's fine, but you can also just go up to the chart, look across, and that will help. Okay, so there's eight pints in one gallon. So I'm gonna go back here and here's kind of my magic number. I might kind of bubble that. 
Now, the third part is to solve. Now, again, if you can't do this off the top of your head, just come down here and divide it. So if you're not sure, let's do eight into 104 because we don't want to guess. So I know it can't go into one, but eight can go into 10, right? One time, and now I'm just doing my normal division. So I'm going to subtract that, left with two, drop down my four. Oh, that's a lovely number. So eight can go into 24 at fifth grade. Yeah, perfectly, three times. So there's my answer. So 104 pints, because they're smaller, is equal to 13 gallons. Okay, so I think the tricky part this week is just this step. You guys are awesome at coding. It's just making sure you find that magic number by looking at the chart. Okay, those aren't ones I expect you to memorize right now. I even have to look at my chart sometimes. Okay, okay, we're gonna do one more that might be tricky when they're missing that front number. Okay, let me write one more quick one. Okay. Now, you're like, oh, Mrs. Pritchard, thank you. So we're missing the front, and I put a fraction in. We can still do that, right? Okay. Now, what did I say last week? If you don't like it this way and you're like, this mixes up my coding, just flip it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip and do my one and a half gallons first. And I want to know how many quarts that is. So all I did is I'm going to kind of exit that. I just took this and I flipped it, which is fine. Okay. Now, if I'm going gallons to quarts, which most of you know, gallon is our largest unit. So the only place we can really go is to a smaller unit, right? So I'm going to go larger to smaller. And how am I going to code that? Yeah, multiply. You guys are getting so good at that. So bam, step one, done. Step two, right? I'm going to write my expression. I know I'm going to be multiplying. Now here's that magic number. So I have to think about this and I have to think, okay, how many quarts are in one gallon? So some of you might know this, right? So how many quarts are in one gallon? Again, I can look at my chart and see, bam, four quarts are in one gallon. Or I can look at gallon, man, and see there's four cubes. There's four quarts in that entire gallon. Pretty easy, right? So I'm going to times that by four because there's going to be more of them. Now I'm just going to solve it. So if I have a fraction, what do I do? I just turn it into an improper with our times plus. So two times one is two plus one is three. So three halves, right? Because my denominator does not change times four over one, because I can put any whole number kind of over one. Now, I could multiply that across, no biggie. It'd be pretty easy. But I see right here that I can cross simplify, right? And let's use what we know. So what number can go into both of those? Yeah, two. So two divided by two is a one, and I love when my denominators are both one because I know it's gonna be a whole number. And then four divided by two is two. Oh, I love this math. So all I'm multiplying is my numerators, three times two, which is six. I love it. So if I have one and a half gallons, that would be equal to six quarts. So you guys know how to do the math. It's just setting it up by coding, looking at your chart. There's only four units you've got to focus on. Doing your expression, but here's the big one this week. Be very careful that you look on your chart to know what your magic number is, and then you need to solve. So the math might be a little bit harder than just shifting the decimal like in metric, but it's math that you know how to do. Okay, so I will have some sample problems for you to practice today. I will have another video. It's kind of a, just kind of visualizes how big a gallon, 
a quart, a pint, and cups are. And I mean, who doesn't like a little music in their lives? Okay. So remember, practice these on a separate sheet of paper or a whiteboard. Because the more you practice these, the easier the homework will be that we push out on Wednesday. Okay. All right. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. You got this. Good job, fifth grade.